Greetings. Let us examine the explosive trap saboteur build. Trap builds are the domain of saboteurs due to their position on a skill tree and ascendancy keystones. This one is an elemental damage explosive trap build that deals converted fire damage with a very high critical strike chance. It's used for clearing and bossing so you don't need the second setup. The ascendancy you want to pick is saboteur due to the abundance of trap related keystones for offense and defense. Perfect Crime and Explosives Expert will boost your damage. Pyromaniac and Born in the Shadows are used to increase your survivability. It's the only viable option. Due to it being a physical to fire spell, you can use more auras or gems like Added Fire Damage or Herald of Ash for a significant improvement. Another game mechanics you can take advantage of are alternate ailments gained from a rare scepter, unique amulet, or secrets of suffering keystone. It's an excellent league starter that also has a high potential later in the game. The build can exceed 10 mil DPS with expensive items, but the ability to build it from a scratch qualifies it as an SSF candidate as you don't really need any unique or rare items to start dealing good enough damage. Explosive Trap is one of the most basic traps you can get. It explodes upon activating, causing a number of smaller explosions right after the initial one. It deals physical spell damage and half of it is converted to fire, the other half has to be converted too. It's a life build with high life regeneration rate, ignite, blind, and shock immunity, and 15% reduced damage taken. Nearly permanent blind you inflict reduces the accuracy rating which is great when combined with evasion and ghost dance. The build has a high armor rating and spell suppression chance too. Clear speed is great for a trap build, it has good AoE and hits multiple times. It's a great bossing build but its uber bossing potential is dubious. The overall price is very low, but pushing this build to its limits can get expensive. There is no strict formula for the build to work, as it's very general. The recommended unique items are all cheap and there should be no problem with their acquisition, as the low price is a distinguishing selling point of this build, but their value is of course relatively high at the start of a new league. The Devouring Diadem is the most popular choice for this build as it allows you to fit in more auras, and due to Eldritch Battery, you won't have to worry about the mana cost of skills no more. The Annihilating Light triples the elemental damage of your traps so it's definitely worth its price, but be careful, it will leave you with no shield and significantly lowered elemental resistances. Tinkerskin is a cheap candidate for great body armor for most trap builds due to its stats, life regeneration, frenzy charge generation, phasing, and increased cooldown recovery rate. Skin of the Lords is an amazing chest piece, it increases the gem level of its socketed setup granting much more damage. It increases your global defenses too. The Brass Dome is a situational body armor for a lot of armor and maximum elemental resistances. It is often used in combination with Determination Aura. At Ziri's Step, a very cheap and good pair of boots with all the useful stats like spell suppression, but no resistances. Keep that in mind. If you can balance the two of your highest attributes, definitely go for leadership's price. The default ailments can still be caused by skitterbots. Ashes of the Stars is a much more expensive way to increase the gem level of your explosive trap, the gem quality, and mana reservation efficiency. This amulet is often used in many other builds, some of which you may want to upgrade at any rate. Circle of Anguish is one of the best rings to use. Get more damage, increased mana reservation efficiency, or increased buff effect. We recommend wearing two of these. Secrets of suffering from the interrogation make you scorch, brittle, and sap enemies with critical strikes, but you're unable to chill, ignite, and shock on your own. Your skitterbots can chill, shock, and even ignite enemies as already mentioned so it's no issue. It's expensive. Watcher's Eye. Zealotry modifiers affiliated with Critical Strike are great. The ones for Grace or Determination are mostly defensively oriented. It's a life build, so obviously increasing your maximum life is a priority if you want a more durable build. Spell suppression will be good too. For more damage look for spell, fire, or physical damage with traps, and most importantly, the increases to the gem level of explosive trap. 
critical strike chance and multiplier are other ways in which you can get more DPS. On a helmet, there's one great offensive mod for when you're standing close to the opponents, it makes them take increased fire damage. Life, spell suppression chance, evasion, and added physical or fire damage are other useful affixes. You can go for a setup with a weapon and a shield as it's much more defensive oriented. Look for fire damage and critical strike mods on a weapon. The level of skill gems. Mods are usually very expensive but it should be feasible to get an increase to all fire skill gems at least. Alternating scepter has built-in secrets of suffering so keep an eye on these. On a shield, look for the defensive stats such as life, resistances, suppression, maximum elemental resistances, attributes, or mana reservation efficiency. Life, resistances, and spell critical strike chance can be found on rare body armor. If you're using ghost dance and no eldritch battery you can even try to get some more energy shield for an extra defensive layer. It's best to use a mixed base to easily craft all the needed red sockets. Boots, maximum life, movement speed, spell suppression chance, and elemental resistances are your top priorities here. Gloves can cost a little more since there are two mandatory mods, a Crusader's prefix for physical to fire conversion, 18 to 25%, and Eldritch Icor's implicit, for 10 to 35%, that's the blue one. You can also craft it after unveiling. On a belt try to get the basic defensive mods such as life and resistances. Strength will be needed too, you're using quite a few red gems that require this attribute. There are a lot of useful mods to look for on the amulet, the most valuable is the increased level of skill gems that would affect your explosive trap. For a start just try to get life, resistances, and crit chance. Rings offer much the same mods as an amulet, look for life, resistances, spell damage, crit chance, crit multiplier, and attributes if you're missing some. Maximum life is the most important mod to seek on the jewels, you can then look for the missing stats and critical strike affixes. Get the elemental damage large cluster jewels with no more than 8 or 9 nodes and 2 or 3 useful notables. The physical jewels are great too since you deal converted damage. Most of the trap damage or critical strike chance medium cluster jewels have excellent notables worth picking up. Bottled Faith is one of the most expensive flasks, but it's also very good. Keep an eye on it for the finishing touches. At Ziri's promise is good for chaos resistance, more damage, and life leech. For the magic flasks, get life flask of staunching for bleed removal, diamond, jade, silver, quicksilver, or granite flasks with increased critical strike chance, movement speed, evasion, or armor as their suffixes. Explosive Trap it explodes a few times dealing spell fire damage, converted from physical damage. Link it with trap and mind damage, swift assembly, added fire damage, fire penetration, and inspiration. If your critical strike chance is already high and you don't need to lower the mana cost, replace inspiration with increased critical damage. Empower support can be used later instead of fire penetration. You can socket the auras in the devouring diadem, or even link up with enlightened support. Herald of Ash is the most valuable mana reserving skill as it adds a lot of fire damage to your skills, and makes enemies deal AoE burning damage on death. Grace grants you an additional and increased evasion rating. If you prefer to use armor instead, go for determination, or both at the same time. Put the most expensive auras in the devouring diadem if you have it. Skitterbots can chill and shock enemies, which is extremely valuable with alternate ailments. You have also more trap damage. You can link summon Skitterbot's gem with Infernal Legion support so that they will deal burning damage. With Devouring Diadem you will have enough mana to use an aura with Divine Blessing support attached to it. Zealotry increases spell critical strike chance and grants more spell damage. Activate it during tough encounters. Arcanist Brand will activate all link spells every second as the brand is attached to the opponent. Use Flammability, a curse that reduces fire resistance which should be the only type of damage you deal. Wave of Conviction applies fire exposure, reducing fire resistance. If you manage to ignite an enemy with one of the link's spells, 
Its fire resistance gets reduced by an additional 10% thanks to the combustion support, but be careful, you may not be able to ignite. If you can apply the second curse, put the elemental weakness here instead of combustion. Flame Dash is a dash type spell used to relocate. Link it with arcane surge support, but keep it at a level low enough so that a single cast of Flame Dash will activate it. It grants you spell damage and mana regeneration rate. Phase Run grants you increased stealth, phasing, and makes you faster for much better mobility. It lasts longer the more frenzy charges it has consumed. We recommend setting it up as the movement key, but you might want to not include it at all to save a socket. Vol Righteous Fire will grant you much more spell damage for the next 4 seconds. You can activate it during boss fights but stay heedful, it will remove a big chunk of your life and energy shield. Bear Trap immobilizes an enemy and makes it receive increased damage from all traps, it's useful during boss fights. Cast when damage taken setup should include a guard spell like Steel Skin or Molten Shell. Molten Shell would be better if you've managed to accumulate a lot of armor by using Determination. You can also include a Stone Golem in this setup if you have a free socket. It will regenerate your life in a fashion similar to Vitality. Bandits. Kill all of them. The Pantheon offers a lot of flexibility. We recommend the Brine King Soul as after upgrading, it's possible to achieve complete immunity against all the default elemental ailments. It also prevents multiple stuns. All the other major gods are good too. The Soul of Shikari is one we've selected for a minor god. It reduces poison damage and further reduces chaos damage taken. It's the easiest way to cover up the lack of any significant protection against this type of damage here. On the passive skill tree we've obviously selected a lot of trap nodes, but no fire damage ones as there are simply none on this side of the skill tree. Aura nodes for aura effect and reservation efficiency would be great, pick up charisma and influence, maybe even leadership. For more damage get the critical strike, and elemental damage nodes. For durability, get maximum life, evasion, and spell suppression. We made some space for a cluster jewel too. For masteries, get the two maximum life ones for more maximum life, trap masteries for skitterbot's reservation efficiency, a chance to throw additional traps, and the ability to place additional traps. For reservation mastery pick the increased aura effect, for evasion mastery pick grace reservation efficiency, for suppression mastery pick increased critical strike chance, and for resistance and ailment protection mastery pick extra resistances. If you can cause brittle, sap, and scorch, Allocate the critical mastery for increased effect of non-damaging ailments, and elemental mastery with the same effect. That is all for this video. Give it a like or subscribe to the channel, we're publishing new build guides regularly. Goodbye.